Ball pythons are really cool, but should you have one living with you? No! Kent, this is my intro. Sorry. Ball pythons are really cool, but should you have one living with you? I mean, yeah, maybe. Here's why. Welcome to The Green Room, I'm Bob Bledsoe. This is Molly Malone. Behind the camera, as you already know, is my brother Kent. At the real Kentstagram on IG. Kent, maybe since you're the marketing department, you could promote Green Room Pythons also. Green underscore room underscore pythons. In last week's video, you saw a list of reasons why you shouldn't get a ball python. And a lot of those reasons didn't have to do so much with drawbacks of ball pythons, uh, but they had to do more with, with sort of quirks of human personalities that maybe shouldn't get a ball python. So if you watched that video and you weren't scared off by any of the downsides of ball pythons and you didn't identify with any of the human behavior quirks, this might be the video for you. And watch till the very end because just like in last video, I'm going to let Kent give his reasons why you should get a ball python. You shouldn't. Kent, last week you got to do this. We need to give both sides. You work for a Python company. Okay. You've got until the end of the video to come up with your reasons why you should get a ball python. <laughs> what? Nothing. I'm gonna put her back because I think she's gonna poo. And let's talk about why you should get a ball python. Hey you guys, I'm gonna pop this into the video really quick. Baby stickers are in, and the first batch is being shipped out to people who requested them yesterday. There are some questions as to whether I will ship internationally, and yeah, check it out. I got international stamps. So uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, watch last week's video till the very end. There's an Easter egg regarding these baby stickers, and those are from a piece of art that I did in the video from the week before. So check it out, and if you want a baby sticker, Details are in last week's video. Hey, I'm back with a different snake. This is the inspector. And look, he's in shed. That's what a snake's belly looks like when they're in shed. All right, one reason that I think you might want to get a ball python is they're super handleable. These are not generally defensive. They're slow moving. They're not going to dart off on you. And they usually get to a point pretty quickly where they tolerate being handled by humans. If this were a Woma python or some other species, uh, I might not be just talking to you and handling it. I would have my eyes on the snake the whole time because it could tag me at any time. In fact, there's a video right here or right there of me getting tagged by a Woma python. Feel free to watch that after you watch this video. Uh, but ball pythons, once you have them in your hands, they're not gonna bite the hand that holds it in general. All of my snakes are really handleable and socialized. I'd be shocked if any of them ever got into a defensive strike position, except for the breeding females maybe that, that if they're sitting on eggs, you know, uh, you can expect that. But other than that, they're like no problem. The inspector here moves about as fast as this. Number two reason you might want to get a ball python, they're really easy to house once you understand their requirements, size requirements, and things like that. They do really well in plastic tubs or bins or racks or glass enclosures, all the way from fish tanks to a front opening enclosure like the inspector has there. Uh, and they do really well in PVC enclosures, which I don't have one, but those might be the best. But you know what, here's the thing, there's a lot of debate over enclosures on the internet and it's usually people that have one style of enclosure, they feel like that's the best for snakes and the other styles are terrible. But the fact is, there are thousands of ball pythons that do really well in glass enclosures, thousands that do really well in racks, thousands that do really well in PVC enclosures. They just thrive really well in an enclosure keep it locked, make sure it's the right size, and they have their temps and humidity, and use whatever, whatever you've got. You know, build an enclosure. So figure out which enclosure you wanna use, learn all about it, set it up, and prepare for a happy, healthy snake. Number three, 
they literally don't smell like anything. There's no smell to these. You can have a hundred of them in a room and as long as you keep their enclosures clean, you won't smell them. The nice thing is when I go into an enclosure, for instance, when I just pulled Molly Malone out, I smelled a slight smell of something. That means that she pooped somewhere and I found it. She did, it was the smallest amount, but I can tell because I smell something. If I smell absolutely nothing, that means that they have clean enclosures and these things just don't smell. There's no smell to them. Here's a great example. If you watch that video that I referred to earlier, I'm at John's Jungle. That's where I get tagged by the Woma Python. He has hundreds of snakes in a fairly small room and that room smells no different than any other place next door. There's a FedEx right next door. It all it just smells like an office building. Now, if you breed rodents, that's a totally different story. Speaking of smell, that's a nice segue into another thing. Poop. These guys don't poop very often. Like once a week to once every month and a half or so for some snakes. They just are really efficient with using the meals that they eat. And they can eat a number of meals before they poop. So you're not going in every day. This is not a pet that you have to clean up after every single day. They really do use that food. If, if you have a hatchling, you might notice that you can give your hatchling a meal and then you leave them alone for a few days to digest that meal. And then you go in to pick them up and they are noticeably bigger. Like not, not bigger in the belly because they've got a rat in there. They've digested that already, but they're longer. So they use that for growth and energy and everything else. They use every single thing. I'm going to put the inspector back. He's going into shed and I think he's going to be more comfortable back in his home. Reason number, I think five, why you might want to get a ball python. You all know that I'm really into the science of this and the genetics of ball pythons are amazing. You can get a ball python in just about every color and pattern that you want, not blue, not green, and I think Paisley's out, but almost any color that you want, you can get. I mean, look at these two. People that don't know ball pythons would never guess that these were the exact same species of snake. Hi, baby girl. Hi, you checking out my eye? Here's one reason why I personally am drawn to ball pythons. I think of these guys as the monks of the animal world. They spend most of their day sitting and this is just speculation here, but I'm guessing that while they're sitting, they're probably not thinking about the past or the future or what somebody else said about them. They have little to no possessions. It's probably more accurate to say they have no possessions. They go on fasts, which is very Gandhi-like. Just about every aspect of being a ball python caretaker takes patience. You know, getting a non-eating snake back on food takes patience. Switching them from, you know, mice to rats or, or live to frozen thought or whatever takes patience. The breeding process, everything. And I think a little forced patience is, is good sometimes for, for me anyway. Another thing that I really love about them is ball pythons are very grounding animals. I mean, they spend their whole life with their bellies to the ground. But aside from that, what I mean by being a grounding animal is that if I have a crazy day out in the world and I come home and I'm just kind of on edge, I can grab one of my friends here and hang out with them for a little bit. And their relaxed, slow moving demeanor is something that I can feed off of. And it sort of is calming and relaxing and grounding for me. And I really appreciate that. If I had cockatoos, there's no way that that would be a thing. Reason number seven that you might want to get a ball python. They're a big snake, but they're very small compared to a lot of other pythons. This is Damara and we're going to leave her alone because this mama is nesting right now. She's bigger than a lot of females would get. Females are bigger than males in general. And she's a very big ball python. She weighs about 3,700 grams. And sometimes they get a little bit bigger than that, but not much. The snakes that you see people holding that are just massive and you're like, whoa, I can't believe that person has that snake. Or when you hear about the invasive species in Florida, they're talking about reticulated pythons and Burmese pythons. Burmese especially are the, are the uh, ones in Florida that are the most prevalent. But here's a comparison. Damara is, again, bigger than a lot of ball pythons will get, and she weighs about eight pounds. Reticulated and Burmese pythons can get over 200 pounds. So we're talking about a completely different thing. Pretty big snake, 
but not unmanageable and definitely won't hurt a smaller person, won't hurt a child. Always supervise if you have your children around snakes. Another reason for me specifically that I love ball pythons is that they only eat like once a week or once every two weeks or once every three weeks, depending on the size of the snake and the season. But I am out of town normally when we're not in a pandemic, I'm out of town about half the weekends out of the year. So I can make sure that my snakes were fed a couple days before I left and that they have water, fresh water right before I leave. And then I can be gone for two or three days and they're gonna be totally happy to not have a human being around opening their tub every day and looking in on them. I come back and the snakes are just fine. This is Freya, by the way, and I love her, but I'm putting her back because she's developing follicles and I don't wanna really mess with her either. Okay, you've watched this video and probably my last one and a whole bunch of others on YouTube and you've decided that you should get a ball python. How do you know when you're ready to get a ball python? If you've done a ton of research and you can answer all kinds of questions about ball pythons where you feel like you're almost an expert and you've purchased an enclosure and everything that you need for a proper setup for your ball python and you've set it up, you've got the heat and humidity going, everything's working great, now you're ready to get a ball python. Kent, you've had all this time to come up with reasons why someone would want to have a ball python. Let's hear it. Okay, I have a whole list now. Why you should have a ball python by Kent Bledsoe. Number A, you don't care about the safety of your community. Number B, you want to choose your own way to die. Three, you like being sized up as a future meal. Number four, you enjoy the feeling of massive teeth embedded in your face. Number five, you like the feeling of snake venom coursing through your veins until it gets to your heart and eventually stops it and you fall over and hit your head on the counter on the way down. Kent, that's impossible. If you were in the kitchen standing near the counter, I had a friend who hit his head on the counter once. I'm talking about your entire list. You didn't even hear a thing I was saying. I'm focused on trying to film you in a professional manner on my state-of-the-art camera. I don't have time to also listen to what you're saying. Thanks, Kent. Do the sign-off since you're the marketing guy. Like and subscribe and hit the bell and we hope that you enjoyed this video on why you should get a ball python, which you shouldn't under any circumstances. They are awful creatures who are dangerous and they'll eat you and your family and your neighbors. Stay alive.